be Facebook is a big name draw. I like to think it's me, but yeah, I think yeah. it might have something to do with Facebook. You're very handsome yeah, and you know, you. You're very attractive. I'd go to your session. Um, <laughs> Seriously though, I mean HBase. We were. I was tweeting earlier um, and yesterday. HBase has got some significant traction right now in the marketplace. Um, you guys are big, big proponents of Hadoop. Facebook's got massive data. Uh, we had uh, Jeff Hammerbacher on earlier, the data guy from early on at Facebook, yep. and also now co-founder Cloudera. Um, you guys are a great example of how you use data in the Facebook platform. It's been amazing success. Facebook Connect, you got external data, all kinds of data, internal data. I can only a imagine a tsunami that Shep and those guys put together over there, um, and we've interviewed uh, before. It's just massive. You do a lot of homegrown stuff. You know, Project Haystack was well renowned. Photos are a big app. You got user data. I mean, it's complex. There's a lot of data, for sure, and then a lot of analysis of all that data, <laughs> which is even more data. <laughs> so Facebook, you guys are cranking it out. 800 million now, last I heard. 800 million actives, yeah. And, and growing like crazy. So what are the data challenges that you have? And then we'll jump into the age base thing. Big data challenges. I mean, uh, there's kind of two sides of the house. There's the OLTP stuff and there's the, OL, the OLAP stuff. And uh, in the past, I was traditionally working on all of the OLAP stuff, so the Hadoop data warehouse, the Hive data warehouse. And there it's, you know, keeping up with capacity. We make it really, really easy at Facebook to put data into the warehouse. So that means that there's constantly and constantly data going in there. I think the most recent stat is something like 250 terabytes of data into the warehouse every day. So just data growth is astronomical. I mean, it's really just keeping up with literally putting in more disk drives to keep up with it. Uh, and then on the other side of the house, the, the transactional side, uh, which is where I'm working now, the challenges there is pretty much just scale. I mean, it's 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 the same challenge, I guess. Which, just which <laughs> features of the Facebook application are you working on? Is there all of them, all so, specifically? Is it the ad side? Is it? Well, talking. So if we kind of switch to HBase a little bit, um, the first project that we did with HBase that was transactional uh, was user data. It was an OLTP application that was Facebook Messages, and the reason that we looked at HBase there is really because we were looking at our sharded MySQL setup. Uh, however many you know petabytes of data we're storing there, and we were looking at launching an email service, persisting every single instant message that gets sent on Facebook, which is to the tune of 50,000 a second, uh, and persisting all of that forever. And now so you have Skype video, which I know you're not storing. We are not storing that. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Tony Bates that in the press conference. No. That's a ton of messages. So every single chat, every single email message has to be stored persistently. So you dump it. Has to be into indexed, so it's searchable. And we need it to be randomly accessible by all of the users. And one of the big challenges also is we had an existing messages service on MySQL. So we had to migrate the whole thing onto HBase while it was live in production. So it was definitely a challenging project. But the reason that we went with HBase was looking at the data requirements. It was going to double our size of our user database tier. I mean, all the data we have in there, it was just going to double. So the prospect of just doubling data was really, really a scary one. And so that's why engineers kind of decided, what else could we do? Yeah. Is there something that's going to be more optimized for this kind of storage? Um, so obviously with, with HBase, you get the massive rows. You don't have the structure um, like MySQL. Also the low latencies there. Is those all the key requirements as well? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the right stuff. Obviously, if you're persisting every instant message, the writes are insane. I'd say another big difference has to do with the fact that uh, relational databases get slower and slower as their table grows. And so even if you have a bunch of cold data, because you're not accessing it, doesn't matter. It's still going to slow down your accesses to the hot data just because of the nature of relational database. HBase is much better at kind of archiving old data so that you really don't need to touch it unless you really need it. And so something like email, I mean, how often do you read last year's emails? Never. Never. So, yeah. <laughs> right, you're always reading. The I should be deleting them all, but. Nobody does. No one does. So no one deletes anything and no one reads it. So you yeah. have to store it because maybe they want to read it, but you don't want yeah. it to be slowing down all you, your So all you your don't want it to cost a lot. You don't want to impact performance of the core stuff, unread right. messages or other things. Right. So on the hardware side, you, you playing with, uh, obviously, Flash and SSD is hot. I mean, on, on, you know, we, it's a smoking hot area for the hot data. We do. We buy a lot of Fusion I.O. at Facebook, yeah. as you may have heard. Yeah, we've uh, heard. <laughs> we have been covering Fusion from day one. Um, yeah, they're smoking hot. they got some cool stuff coming around the corner, too. I mean, we're under NDA with Fusion, so we really can't talk about the future. But from what I can see, they have it's some bright. amazing, amazing yeah. stuff. It's so, very bright. Yeah, it's made my job harder because we're using Flash now on the, on the MySQL tiers. 
And so now, you know, because HBase, we need to basically be up against MySQL. And the team I'm on now, it's called Database Infrastructure. That's actually where the MySQL team is as well. And so HBase and MySQL is together, same roof, which is cool. But now we have to, we have the MySQL bar. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a high quality bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so which is the cooler team? Because Facebook talks about being cool. Is the HBase team cooler than the MySQL team? <laughs> Very political answer. I think the you of course know, the HBase team. That's what team you're cooler. on. It's it's the new stuff. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Not yeah. this old relational. It's What's 25 the, years old. Yeah, yeah. So, so obviously Hadoop has been your core thing for dumping data on the, in the past, right? For yeah. Data and Hive was the the key component there. Yeah. What new thing about HBase surprised you? Is anything like wow, this is really cool, or is it like oh, this is cool, it still needs more work to be done? I mean, or? I think the really cool thing is the cross section between online and offline that you really Every system before that was an online system or an offline system. And for the first time, we have a system like Puma, which is the second thing I talked about in my talk today, that is kind of real-time streaming MapReduce. And so we're actually using HBase as an analytics kind of data warehousing BI tool, but the web queries it directly. So we can do all the aggregations inside the same HBase cluster How that we that serve. How do you do that the front end of that? Uh, What's, called? What's the project Rift. called? Puma. Puma? Hmm. So, our HBase cluster just uses Thrift, has a Thrift server, and the web connects wow. directly to the HBase cluster through Thrift. So it just sits there, completely addressable. It's there. Nice, <laughs> nice. We do that, uh, so explains with our Twitter data of SiliconANGLE. So what's it like at Facebook right now in engineering? I mean, you know, our office is, was in, is in Cloudera, we're gonna be moving out uh, soon, but yeah, I'm always hanging out at the nut house and I see uh, Facebook people there. Yeah, that's the spot. Yeah, you, know, you guys are hiring like crazy. Is it massive yeah, growth? Hiring like crazy, I mean, what's massive the growth. growth. Like? You moved to the new campus yet? I've been there for two years, and the company's doubled twice. Yeah. You know, so are you, in, are you still in California Avenue area, or are you? So I'm floating in? between. There's all of our buildings are kind of right next to each other right. on California well, Avenue and Page Mill. Menlo Park area. Have you? Some people have, but I think soon in the next. I'm not sure exactly when, but soon we're moving. Everybody's moving to Menlo. Do you guys really ring the bell when a new feature uh, ships? Zucker ring the bell? Zuckerberg uh, did the bell and the uh, new feature gets Yeah, shipped. there's like a, a launch switch. Yeah, the launch switch. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. I, don't know, I haven't been there in a while <laughs> since we've done that, but it, it gets done. All right. I think we launched too many things now. We'd be flipping the switch. Jonathan Gray at Facebook. <laughs> what lessons have you learned at scale with HBase? Obviously, for folks out there, you guys are a great example of, to me, the future application that enterprises are struggling with. I mean, Facebook, you guys had a clean sheet of paper, built a great platform. You, your product model has been about introducing product and iter iterating fast. No real clunky, clunky R&D team slow things down. Yeah. It's really applied research in real time. So you, it is. you launch some stuff, smaller teams, really good code of ethic over there with them among the engineers, which is cool. What have you learned and what, what could you share for the folks out there who are moving to cloud, building their apps, trying to be more appified in the sense of, being like a Facebook, in the sense of being an IT ops, DevOps environment. What are the biggest challenges? Well, one thing I, I, I'd say that I love about Facebook is the way that our ops and DevOps work, is we have what we call app ops people that are on our engineering teams. So rather than kind of in a lot of organizations, there's a distinct wall. There's engineering and there's operations, and there's a lot of finger pointing, and there's another main problem is the fact that Hadoop and HBase and these other technologies, they're so early, that there's no such thing as ops. I mean, it's engineering. <laughs> it's engineering ops, right? So it's one thing that I've really, really liked is we have ops guys that have an engineering bent, and then all of our engineers are very kind of aware of ops. And so it's created a really good environment and allowed us to iterate quickly there. Um, that's the culture, basically. That's, that's, that's culture. the culture. So if, you're, if you have that siloed you know, ops skills, you're screwed. <laughs> basically is what you're saying. Well, I'm saying that. He didn't no, say it's, that. It's, I said that. It's an uphill battle, and, yeah. and it depends on the ops guys. And I, there's nothing like sitting with people. You know, I mean, in the end of the day, people are people. And sitting with people, you become tolerant, and you understand what their position is, and all that kind of stuff. So Google has this hiring philosophy where you got to have a certain GPA and the yeah. certain scores. Facebook has a similar kind of... Uh, culture, um, and we heard from Hummerbacher that, you know, what he's seeing in data science and data is not just about, you know, the killer comp sci guy, but you're looking at guys, sociologists, you know, and uh, researcher, and you have a psychology degree, but they're really good at math. So, yeah. okay, here's a manual, learn how to code. Is that kind of the culture at Facebook? What is, how would you define, like, the hiring criteria 
uh, at, at Facebook or the cultural criteria? I mean, I'd say it depends a little bit because there are really, really producty front end people. There's more infrastructure people, and, all, and, then, and then we have a huge data science team. Data science is a really awesome area, and exactly that. I mean, we're hiring kind of really unique people. Um, but I'd say overall, it's an entrepreneurial culture, an entrepreneurial hiring thing, and it's kind of the gift and the curse of Facebook is uh, you hire people who are self-starters. I mean, there's very little process, small teams, and so the kind of people you need to hire are the kind of people who don't need direction, who are going to just, with really, really loosely coupled requirements, be able to just figure things out. I mean, people who want to yeah. be kind of given, like, this is what you're going to be doing, and then go sit down and do it, it's, people are not happy at Facebook doing that kind of stuff. Well, certainly Facebook has inspired zillions of people out there. I have a 16-year-old kid, and Zuckerberg just moved in the neighborhood around the corner from me. So it's like they know that he lives there. They want to go knock on his door and say hello. I'm like, oh, my God. But but sh what can you share? Let's talk about to those young kids out there, the 16-year-olds or, or the you know the high school kids or the college kids who really get like the future's different. They don't have that legacy view of, you know, and the, the Occupy Wall Street view set right now. People are like, oh, they, they want a new future. What mm -hmm. would you share with the new generation of coders and developers around, you know, what's it like, to, what kind of skill set should they be acquiring to, if they want to play in this new development environment? Databases are changing and yeah. a whole new generation of shift is happening. We've been talking about it, how the database market, or you know, relational databases with Oracle, when that was a startup and that spawned and Hadoop's doing the same thing. So we now have a whole new generation of an industry. Yeah. And those 16 year olds will be entry level employees soon and the college kids in, you know, all over the world. Yeah. What do you say to them? I mean, what's the advice would you give them? Well, open source would be the first thing I would say. Yeah. Okay. I made a career out of open source, and and it's been the gift that keeps on giving. And so the first thing I would say is do open source. One hiring criteria Facebook uses a lot is open source. There is no better way to tell the quality of a candidate than seeing their interactions in an open source community, seeing all their code, things like that. The other thing is you have transferable skills. I mean, I can go and work at Microsoft on my Microsoft SQL Server. I can work at Facebook on HBase. And then I can go somewhere else and work on HBase, right? So open source gives you that transferability. Um, a piece of advice I recently gave to a class of Berkeley undergrads was a lesson I learned interning during college, which was if you work in tech, work for a tech company. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. It's, it's a lesson I think that, that, that Really, technologists, I think it could be a really frustrating experience that a lot of people I know have gone through um, being at a company where technology itself is really not the, the focus. And that can be a frustrating experience for engineers. We're here with Jonathan Gray from Facebook. He's the guy who leads the HBase charge. My final question, we'll call it a wrap, is what do you want what do you want to have happen with HBase going forward? What are your what are your goals for HBase? What's next and how is it going to morph in uh, out in, for you and Facebook? I think it's uh, as always, it's got to be stability. I mean, operability, all of that kind of thing. I think Hadoop and HBase both have really a long way to go there. I'd love to see an HBase that you don't have to be Facebook to run it at scale. You know, I mean, we're a really special kind of set of guys with a huge number of engineers that are supporting the effort. And uh, I think ease of use would be something that would be awesome. Okay, Jonathan Gray from Facebook. Thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Hey, Been great, great conversation. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. 